so I'd like to thank Board Bia and commend them on a really helpful and really useful day that I think we've had so far, so far today. Um, my presentation today, I think, is going to be hopefully quite practical and useful for people. Um, I'm going to give a, quite a high-level overview, um, and we do have a number of breakout sessions after this that you'll be able to get quite a lot of technical detail on um, and ask any technical questions you have there. So I have two parts to my presentation today. Um, I'm going to talk you through a high-level view on DAPM's preparations uh, for a no-deal Brexit. Um, and then I'm going to give you a number of key messages that I really hope that you can take away. We've talked today a lot about the actions that need to be taken, um, and we've heard some positive noises here today, which is great. So just I'll be focusing, I suppose, on reminders for the 15% of uh, the respondents of the board via barometer who haven't yet registered with uh, revenue, um, and the 51% who haven't yet registered with the department um, uh, and or the HSE. And, and I'll also be reminding you, uh, as Carol was talking, about the importance of submitting your documentation uh, to us uh, if you're importing uh, on time in advance to regulatory deadlines. So um, the department has been preparing for Brexit since uh, in advance of the um, Brexit referendum in 2016, and obviously our preparations have ramped up um, over the, the last couple of years. Um, we have uh, had a, an increased focus on stakeholder engagement and communication, um, and this in particular ramped up towards the March and April deadlines. In particular, we updated the Brexit web pages on our website. Um, in the lead up to March and April, we had weekly Brexit updates on our website, um, and we hope to continue that then again over the summer. We established a Brexit call center. Um, I'll leave up the details of that um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, that is still um, in place at the minute. So if anyone have, has any questions after this, you can always contact us through the Brexit call center. We contacted operators directly through our uh, trader notices. We contributed it to national statements. And, and we had a many a numerous direct engagements with um, businesses uh, through interdepartmental seminars and one-to-one -one meetings through our stakeholder consultative committees, the All-Island Civic Dialogue, and a number of sectoral focus groups that uh, we took place last year. And we continue to feed into the whole of government coordination on communications. So in terms of import controls, quite a lot of what um, Carol said in her talk is really relevant. Uh, a lot of the key, the key messages are relevant to uh, SPS controls here as well. Um, again, I'm going to talk through uh, east-west controls here in a no-deal Brexit scenario. Um, similar to, to what Carol said, we do actually know what the legislative basis for these controls are. These rules are set by the EU. Uh, third country rules will apply to the UK in a no-deal scenario. So the department has been uh, contributing to a whole-of-government approach in this area. Uh, Daphne's policy is to balance our legal obligations with facilitating trade to the greatest extent possible. And we do this through a, a number of areas, uh, infrastructure, staffing, IT systems, and adaptive processes. In terms of infrastructure, we've uh, again worked through a whole of government approach to deliver new and upgraded infrastructure, primarily at Dublin Port, Brussels Airport, and also Dublin Airport. Um, this temporary infrastructure was in place by March, and we're now working again through the whole of government uh, approach to make sure that we have whatever upgrades or improvements that we can have by October. Um, in terms of uh, staffing, de uh, the department is working towards a 24-hour model. Uh, so this means 24-hour provision of service in Dublin Port, 24-hour uh, provision of uh, documentary checks, uh, extended working hours in Ross Lair and Dublin Airport with provision for on-call service as required. This has uh, necessitated an increase in our staff working on uh, import controls, um, and we're providing these staff through a number of means, recruitment, internal deployment, and temporary and contract staff, primarily on our veterinary side of things. And we have crisis management and supervisory structures in place. We've also, uh, to assist in this work, developed a number of uh, new IT systems. So we have a new background import control system. Um, we've developed uh, and uh, consolidated our registration processes. So we have a new one-stop registration uh, web page. Um, and uh, again, after our breakout sessions today, uh, everyone will have an opportunity to register with the department um, and guide you through that process. And we have contingency plans in place for if our uh, import control uh, IT system uh, has issues. Um, I just want to give you an overview now um, of the import control process. And again, just to 
um, reiterate in terms of the documentation and stuff, you can get more information on the technical side of this in our breakout sessions. Um, I'm going to go through the process for DAFM, but quite a lot of what I say is also relevant for the HSE. And um, as Carl mentioned, I'm going to use just the agent, but again, if, this is, if you're planning on doing this in-house yourself, just put yourself in the shoes of this. So the agent needs to, or wh the person who's responsible for the load, needs to submit their SPS documentation uh, to the department at least 24 hours in advance of arrival. Um, this is a legal requirement, but it's also, as you'll see as I go through this slide, it's also to assist us and to assist you. So the earlier you get your documentation in, and the more accurate it is at the start, the better able we will be able to, to help you um, and to make sure that you can be um, uh, get your routing as soon as possible. So I mentioned our new uh, IT uh, system that we've developed. This will give your consignment a unique DAFM ID identifier. We'll give you confirmation of this uh, receipt of your documentation, and we will remind you, if you haven't already at that point, uh, given your MRN number, so this is the number on your uh, SAD, SAD, or TAD, uh, TAD document. Uh, we need that number to communicate with revenue. So um, if we don't have that, that will absolutely slow down uh, your, your consignment. So we will give you a reminder, uh, and please do send that in as soon as possible. Um, to the extent possible and where possible, we will um, complete documentary checks in the background within this 24-hour period. Um, if we have queries, we will follow up with the agent, and as I say, we can do that at any stage within a 24-hour period, so um, please make sure that we'll, you'll be able to answer our questions. Um, we will notify the, uh, the, uh, our routing to revenue. Uh, again, using that MRN number, highlighting the importance of that. Um, the revenue will notify the agent through, through current normal channels, and they're also going to put the routing uh, on a website available for drivers. Um, so this goes back to what uh, Carl was mentioning earlier as well about uh, driver ability to follow routing on, on arrival. So you need to consider your driver's connectivity. So do they have a smartphone, or is the agent going to communicate directly to the driver? Um, and considering their level of English as well on arrival. So the driver will follow the routing, and the consignment may be called for further documentary checks, physical checks, uh, identity checks. Um, and I will just mention here at this point as well that we have uh, revenue and ourselves have made a provision, specific provision for fast tracking goods in terms of the land bridge. Um, so that's it, I think, on import controls. Um, unlike on the import control side, on the export certification, these requirements are set by the UK. However, DAFM's policy is to protect and facilitate agri-food trade. Um, what, we, what the UK has told us so far is that um, we don't expect changes uh, to certification requirements on the live animal side, um, where they will still require health certification except for uh, registered horses. Um, there is no requirement, the UK is currently saying that there is no requirement for certification for products of animal origin. Um, the, we as a department, we do anticipate that this will change uh, how quickly after an ODL scenario, we don't know. Um, but we are preparing for that scenario in terms of how we would deal with those increased volumes of requests for certification. And what we do know so far is that the UK is requesting phytosanitary certification for plant products. Uh, and we have a new IT system in place to uh, issue those certs. Um, I won't go into too much detail on the, uh, the work we've been doing on the industry and budgetary supports. I think the, the Minister covered this quite well earlier. Um, but just to remind you of some of the supports that have been made available, the 150 million agri cash flow loan scheme available in 2017, the 300 million Brexit loan scheme um, rolled out with the Department of Business and Enterprise, of which 40% uh, of the funds at least were ring-fenced for food businesses. The Future Growth Loan Scheme, which opened in April of this year, uh, budget 2019 also making provision for the 44 million euro direct aid for farmers. The recently announced EU supports in terms of the 50 million exceptional aid uh, scheme for the beef sector and the details of that scheme are being worked out. Um, and just as, as well to mention that additional uh, support for board BIA and Chagas in terms of market diversi diversification and product diversification. And again, this is also being supplemented by the work um, 
the minister mentioned earlier in terms of trade missions and increasing our global footprint. So, key messages. You have all heard this all day, but in case anyone has forgotten, please register um, absolutely with revenue um, and with, uh, the, uh, with the department or the HSE if that is more applicable for you, or possibly both. Um, if you're importing live animals or animal products, you also need to register on traces. Um, th that's also the same for, sorry, exporters should also be registering with us. Um, there, I suppose there may have been some uh, questions around this, who should register with, with the department. Absolutely the person who's responsible for the load definitely needs to register with us. But what I would say as well is um, it's quick and it's free to register with the department. So I would suggest that everybody should be doing it. It's a great way to get um, trading notices and communications from us. Uh, and I know this, this is the same on the HSE side. Um, and if you're importing fishery products, this is not actually a Brexit requirement, but you should also be registered with the SFPA. In terms of import controls, um, again, that reminder to submit your documentation um, at least 24 hours in advance of arrival, um, and please ensure that it is a as accurate as possible. Um, if you're attending our uh, Products of Animal Origin talk after this, Sunita has some great statistics on the number of consignments that are rejected um, are on, on the basis of the documentary check is within the 60%. So most, document, most consignments that are rejected are rejected on the basis of documentary checks. So just make sure your documentation is as accurate as possible. Again, send your MRN number, that's your SAD or your TAD number, um, as soon as possible. And ensure that your agent is available to answer our queries. Um, again, we've been talking a little bit about how people maybe up to, up to this stage haven't needed to know the full details of how their haulier is bringing their uh, products in. Um, but uh, this is primarily, again, an import control point. But um, do bear in mind that if you normally bring in mixed loads, um, single loads are just faster for everyone. They're faster for you coming through the port because we can process them an awful lot faster, both in, term, both in terms of the document check and also on arrival in the port. If you really cannot avoid mixed loads, just bear in mind how your consignments are uh, packed because the longest, when you're doing a physical check, the thing that takes the longest during that stage is actually the unpacking and the repacking. So just bear that in mind. Uh, we talked a good bit about the land bridge today. Just um, a reminder that if you are using the land bridge, you need to now travel under revenue uh, customs formalities. So make sure you're meeting your transit requirements there. And also, um, if you are carrying products of animal origin through the land bridge, you do need to notify those movements on traces. Um, I think in pre anyone who's attended any of our previous talks before is well familiar with this point, but just again a reminder that wood packaging material, regardless of the product within that uh, packaging, does need to meet uh, required international standards. And uh, again, just that point about ensuring your, your driver on arrival will be able to follow the routing as appropriate. So just those are the details for the DAFM call centre, the Brexit call centre, and uh, thank you very much for listening. <laughs>